Good day everyone, my name is Marek Szprowski and I will tell you my story about day-to-day -day testing of Linux Next kernel branch. Let me introduce myself. I work for Samsung R&D Institute Warsaw Poland since 2008. Uh, a year later I became Linux kernel developer and uh, in two years I became a Linux kernel I do day-to-day -day testing of Linux Next uh, kernel releases since 2018. Let's remind me a few words about uh, Linux kernel development model. Um, each new Linux kernel release comes every three months. Uh, the code is hierarchically maintained. Uh, there are maintainers responsible for the various subsystems and parts of the code. Each maintainer manages the its fixes and next branch. And the fixes includes fixes for the current release, the next branch, uh, if one includes new features for the next uh, uh, the upcoming release. New code must be first tested in the next branch, which is then merged during so called to mix merge window. And then stabilized during release community. This is how it looks uh, on, a series, on a graph. We have a base release of 5.18 RC1. Then the fixes that are based on that uh, release uh, are being merged, merged during the 5.18 stabilization time. And the new features in the next branch that are also based on that RC1 release are merged during the merge window for the next uh, release. This would be 5.19 and they appear in 5.19 RC1 release. Of course, this, uh, this is uh, about two branches. Each maintainer has uh, such uh, two branches, so there is a lot of fixes and next branches. If one wants to test if the new features don't uh, break uh, the kernel, he has to either check next branch for each maintainer or wait for the release of the Linux Next. The Linux Next is a project that uh, merges all the next branches from all maintainers. It, is, uh, it contains a release almost every working day. The goal is simple, to check if uh, and find uh, regressions before they reach the main kernel, main kernel branch. There are various levels of testing uh, possible. First uh, kind of testing is compile time, if the code is uh, correct and we don't uh, then we, if the code compiles, we can run it uh, on the emulators like QM. And uh, this is what is being done during uh, preparing of the Linux Next project. Then we can uh, try to put it on the real hardware. Once it puts on the real hardware, we can run some specific user space tools to check if all the features work properly and we can then prepare some advanced test scenarios that includes various uh, interaction between user space tools. If we want to do the test of the hardware, we have to first have such hardware and the easiest way to do test on the hardware is to have a test farm. Well, there are various approaches to uh, to have to, the, to a test farm. There are separate lectures about that. Uh, I will just quickly show how my test farm looks like. I have uh, about 30 single board computers connected uh, with a standard PC. All are uh, based on 32 or 64 bit uh, ARM uh, CPU. For the historical reasons, uh, I have a lot of uh, lots of Exynos-based boards because I did a lot of Exynos uh, kernel development. 
and then I collected various random bots that were available in the office, like Raspberry Pi bots or uh, Android. I mean, I didn't have uh, Arduino or Rwanda bots there. Uh, that PC that manages uh, my test farm has over 50 USB devices connected. There are two Ethernet switches, large Ethernet switches there, then USB hubs. All this occupies four storage shelf, shelves in the test room, and there is a lot of cables. Here are two pictures to give you impression how it looks like. Well, for me, it is important that it simply lets me to, well, to do some tests on the real hardware. A few more words about the hardware configuration of my test farm. Each board is configured to output kernel logs and user console with the UART. Um, boards use Ethernet for the con data connectivity. It might be built-in Ethernet, uh, USB dongle or USB CDC Ethernet gadget if none of the above is possible. I control power with USB HDMI adapter and a set of relays. That adapter is configured in GPIO mode, so I can turn off and off, on and on, on and off each relay independently. I also have some USB camera cameras there for monitoring board display because some of the boards have LED display. Uh, a few important things from the software configuration of my test farm. Uh, all boards are configured to load uh, kernel and modules uh, via PFTP protocol from the PC and they have a Debian and file system stored on the persistent to boot like PMCC or SD card. I identify USB UART adapters by a serial ID feature. This gives me some uh, independence from the USB topology because whenever I can find uh, a given USB device by serial ID independent regardless where it is connected to which hub and access, I access uh, the bot uh, SSH protocol from uh, the PC. I have a single script to control power on, uh, to control power to turn it on or off uh, or even reset the board and to get uh, access to the console port. I have no board reservation, sharing, or any other kind of management. My main goal was to allow quick access to all the uh, boards, uh, like uh, they would be on my desk. How do I did the uh, boot test uh, on my test farm? This would be the first test done on the hardware. Uh, I prepared a shell script that uh, configured the kernel, compiled it, deployed it on the PC that manages the test farm, turns the power on for the given board, and then waits uh, for the login prompt on the console of the given board. The last, uh, the last thing has been I did with the extect tool, which is very convenient if you want to do something on the UART to, 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 to on the UART uh, and the console and there because expect uh, tool can output some char characters and wait for the response uh, with a given time if if the login prompt appears after a given time time in a given time I assume that the boot test has succeeded even such simple uh, approach allowed me to report a few issues back in the 2010. Then I decided to do some more tests uh, because in manual testing uh, one usually try, uh, runs tools like mod test, config, config ping and so on to see if uh, display or networking is working on the tested board. Uh, 
uh, one more soul tracks in some parts in the assess directory. If the um, devices have been properly initialized, then I've also added uh, support for different kernel architectures and different kernel configurations, like uh, some bots were tested with exabus.config uh, and some of some multi files multi disabled.config and I also did uh, ARM64 bit uh, test test. Then a single shell script for doing all this became a problem so I have to make the script a bit more generic and extract all data from it into separate files. I decided to ex extract uh, two kinds of files, configurations, configs, configurations and tests. Configs includes a list of boards to test if a given kernel image, uh, the architecture of that kernel, the configuration file and cross-compiler used for it. And the te and tests are set of uh, rules for the expect rules. This means there are characters to send and the phrase uh, that uh, is uh, that the tool has to wait after sending the uh, given type of them. And to quickly check if the test succeeded or not, I have, I've added uh, coloring of the output. So if everything is green, I'm happy because all the tests are okay, are fine. Let's uh, see how it looks in practice. We have Linux Next release from 8th March this year. And let's run the test. Well, my script uh, made uh, rather red summary. We see that some, some boards, which means that some lines are whole red. This means that the board doesn't even boot and all the tests has failed. All the tests have failed. Let's see what is in the logs for a given board that uh, is whole marked in red. We see kernel logs up to uh, display panel initialization and then after three minutes, which we see that in the timestamp, the nothing happens. Then we see the message from the test script that the test has failed. This means that the board didn't do any activity in that three minutes. So this is uh, a regression. Board stopped booting uh, with, uh, once we switched to this Linux next release. I've checked that the base release for that uh, Linux Next is uh, Linux 5.70 RC1 uh, and it boots fine on that board. So we have to use, uh, we have to somehow find a commit that in between that base release and the top of the Linux Next that introduced that regression. Git tool has a nice subcommand for that, it's called bisect, and it's especially uh, intended for finding regressions. We call it by, uh, we, we do that by calling git bisect start and then give two parameters, the uh, id for the tree that uh, fails and the, the last known uh, working state. In that case I've uh, put this 5.17rc1 uh, uh, tag. Then git tells us that it uh, in roughly 13 steps uh, will find the commit that causes the regression. Uh, in, and then Git uh, checkouts one of such commits, commits that need to be tested and waits for the user to do the test and user has to tell the git tool 
pointed out the test was good or bad, I should call it really decent, good or bad comment. Testing uh, that commit is quite easy, especially that we had already a script that uh, does uh, the test on the new hardware. Uh, however, compiling kernel and booting the mods is still time consuming. We can easily mix something or forget that we are doing that, uh, what was the right result. So, Git tool can also run this script for us and get the information about uh, the result of the test via return out of that script. Zero means good and other values have some special meaning like Barsky for abort the process. So I extended my uh, script that does uh, uh, the test to return a proper uh, value depending on the test result and here are the list of comments that I run to find the regression. Git dissect run test bot, this is the name of my script and the two arguments lets the script know which bot test and which configuration is used. This way I found that uh, which commit is the first bad commit and that the dissection has succeeded. I decided to check if really that commit is really responsible for that regression. I did, I did that by getting back to the top of the Linux Next, the main Linux Next release from that day. I reverted that commit that has been found during the dissection and ran manually the test again. The test has succeeded, so I found which I found the commit that uh, introduced the regression. The commit is a, does a change in a buffer subsystem. However, there is nothing much, much suspicious in it. What should we do to report the regression? We have to make sure that we will notify everyone that has been involved in developing that commit. This is quite easy if the commit has a link tag, which might point to patchwork or to lower kernel oak service, uh, where, from which we can just download the message uh, that contains the original patch. Otherwise, we, I recommend just searching lower kernel oak service for the mails with the same subject as the subject of the patch that causes the regressions. Once we have the mail with the original patch, we can also see from the discussion if the issue has been already spotted or and reported or not. If not, we will report it. We would like to report it. We have to describe what is the regression, what source tree has been tested, what was the hardware platform that uh, we used for the test? This is an important information. Which was uh, kernel, which kernel architecture has been used and configuration? If we ma manage to uh, get the stack trace of the crash, this is this, it can be attached there. We can also add information if reverting it on top of Linux Next helps and everything else what we already spotted. And this is the example report of such uh, uh, regressions sent to mailing list. This is my mail from 8th March this year. I've described that uh, I found that uh, the commit uh, in Linux Next causes freeze after the DRM and related any buffer initialization, some, some, some syntax not based boosts, and this happens only if kernel is compiled from Exynos and Config. Well, then the discussion begins, and we, will, we can help fixing the issue. Another example Linux Next from 18th May this year. Let's run the test. 
we see that most tests succeeded, however, the last column is red and there is information that there have been some warnings during the booting of the bots. Let's check the logs. Indeed, there, are, there is a warning. There, there is a stack trace that caused that warning. And there is uh, in that stack trace the function names and offsets uh, of the various kernel functions that were ca caught uh, when that warning has happened. How we can use this information to find the regress regression? Uh, well, we can, if we want to do this automatically, uh, we can use the function name from the stack trace uh, and just search the logs for it. Uh, we have to drop the offset because offset might uh, depend on the actual comment that has been uh, from which the kernel has been compiled, but the function name is rather stable and typically those no uh, names don't appear in the logs in the everything where file. So I've added uh, an option to search for search the logs for a given string and report it as bad if uh, the string if the given string has been found. Here we see that I've added the parameter bad with DLK gcreate value and and we see that uh, git that the automated reset found the first bad comment. I've double checked it again by getting back to the top of the Linux Linux server to get the commit and running the test manually. And then the test succeeded. So this is another example of my report. I've included the stack trace asked for fixing this issue. What might, uh, what might we found, uh, what might we find during uh, finding for the regressions? The first issue that uh, uh, might be is that reverting the faulty commit on top, Linux next, on top of the Linux next fails. We might try to run uh, git merge tool to resolve some simple conflicts. However, not, this doesn't help in all cases. Uh, the other approach is to find all commits that modify the affected files uh, by the uh, affected files in the faulty commit and revert them to. This usually means that the whole the, all the patches from the patch service has to be find, find and reverted. Example is uh, in Linux Next uh, from the 31st March, and we have then the, this automated resection found the commit from the log subsystem. We try to revert it, but we see that this fails. Git merge to merge to also doesn't help much. However, it shows that uh, there is a problem with uh, given file in the drivers block directory. We get back to the name Linux next means from that day, and we check what are other commits that uh, thought changed changed that file. We try to revert it and then we revert the faulty commit. And after running merge tool, it we finally managed to revert it. And then we run the test and the test succeeds. So we have confirmed that the given commit really introduces that regression. Well, we found that, let's describe again everything we did and report the issue. Here we also see the stack trace and uh, there is information that I 
we've tested it uh, on top of Linux next uh, together with uh, by re reverting this commit and uh, the other one that, that we had found. What else might uh, be hard during the regression typing? Uh, the new Linux next release might contain more than one uh, regression. If we run, run uh, this section, we usually find only one of them. In the second, we can find uh, if we carefully uh, ensure that uh, always the first regression is uh, reverted. Here is an example in the Linux Next release from 13 April. There are two commits that causes reboot regression and uh, we can find we can do the second dissection and dissection again manually by uh, always reverting uh, the first uh, found commit the first uh, commit with the, the regression with the first commit however i found that uh, we may use git stash function for uh, a little help here uh, we check out to the top of the Linux next, do the re revert of the first regression, and then I put uh, git reset mix uh, to the top of the Linux next. This leaves me all the rev all the changes reverted from the first regression in the working peer, and I store the, them in the git stash. Then, when I did uh, the second dissection, I only need to do git stash apply to make sure that uh, the first regression is removed. Uh, this is a nice feature of the git, because uh, if the commit with the first regression was in that tested uh, tree, uh, that git stash apply will uh, remove it from the working bit. However, if it was not yet there in, the, in that tested commit, git stash apply will uh, notice that the working peer, the state of the file, modified files uh, in the, from the stash in the working peer and the, their state in the stash is the same and will just uh, notice that uh, there were no changes, no file has been changed. So there is uh, in both cases um, this command will succeed so we can add it also to our test script to have it already prepared for finding more than one regression in a single release there might be even more complex issues than uh, two issues in a single release dissecting uh, might point us uh, to a merge commit this is very this is rather rare, rare case however this means that there are some non trivial dependencies between both merged branches example uh, of such issue is in linux next uh, release from 30 jump this year dissecting points to commit uh, to a merge commit this is how it looks uh, on the ground we have uh, a merge commit that has been reported by gpsec of course the linux next release it also is considered bad from that day but both parents of that merge commits uh, has been tested and they are good how to find which commit caused the regression uh, my approach in such case is to rebase uh, the topic branch so the branch that introduced uh, that has been merged to the main uh, main tree onto the last uh, working uh, commit from the main tree. This will make a few more uh, few more uh, new commits, uh, like in, in this case there were 25 uh, commits in the topic branch and they 
a ktorý bežne ako by bol dať last minute commit. And however, this makes the linear history that can be easily dissected again. So I did that. I ran the dissection again and found that there is a commit which touches kernel as subsystem that that is responsible for the regression. It's hash ID reported by Dissect uh, is irrelevant because uh, we embrace that commit. However, we can easily uh, check in the log of the uh, topic branch that there is uh, also commit of such subject and get that get the hash ID from there. I've double checked that uh, really that commit is responsible for the regression by first reverting it on mentioned merge commit and running the test and then averting it on top of the Linux test. So right I reported that it is responsible for the regression. Another problem that might appear during finding the regression is uh, the problem of kernel of with code compilation. Sometime Sometimes uh, we find uh, some code that doesn't even compile. Then, so maintainers try to keep the code compiling. Uh, there is a lot of cases where it's simply not possible because no one will always compile for all possible architectures and configuration files. Uh, to make sure that uh, any automated dissection works fine. I recommend to make the script, uh, test script to abort if the code doesn't compile. To avoid uh, uh, reporting broken code as a uh, reason for the kernel, uh, for the tested kernel regression. In such case, I try to manually see what was the reason for the break build break or it can be easily fixed or I try to use the git dissect skip approach which instructs git to skip that commit without judging if it is ok or not. So a little summary of my um, presentation. I have showed a few of my solutions for finding kernel regressions. And I was really surprised how many issues can be found in Linux next releases. Although everyone tries to keep the code uh, best and avoid uh, introducing regressions. What should be noted that a script that does a simple pattern search in the loop logs covers really, really most of the issues uh, I've reported. And here are, here are some uh, numerical results. Uh, in the 5.19 Linux release, uh, there are over 100 commits with, uh, reported by, with my reported by tag, and there are over 300 commits with my tested by tags. Well, this means that uh, you sometimes uh, developers don't add reported by tag or the fix came independently of my report. Uh, on the other hand, I tried to test uh, all the fixes that has been posted by authors or others and leave uh, them my tested by tags. Sometimes uh, there are more than one patch that get a tested by tag if uh, they have been submitted together. In my approach, uh, I also observed that there are false positives. So we really should uh, take care when reporting issues, uh, then especially when looking at the results of the test script, 
Uh, the common concern for kernel logs and user space uh, is uh, only a source of uh, false positives because mixed logs from kernel and user space really confuses expected tool. Also, my test uh, farm relies on the, heavily relies on the USB devices. Uh, I use USB uh, port uh, adapters. Uh, I also use them for controlling relays, uh, and uh, I also use uh, USB for CDC Ethereum gadgets uh, for some bots for the data connectivity. This sometimes uh, fails uh, randomly. So, if you want uh, to make it uh, bulletproof, uh, don't use USB at all. This is a uh, known uh, issue, and everyone who did a lot of, who built uh, his own farm uh, will tell you the same. Another important thing that uh, those four configuration kernel configuration options uh, are, uh, allowed me to find a lot of uh, issues and they are uh, they are enabled uh, almost only in Exynos dev config uh, other kernel configuration configuration files doesn't uh, include them so if you want to test please enable it manually configurations and to, to wrap up there is still a bit of manual work to do in the test of uh, the given Linux next release however uh, analyzing such uh, finding finding and analyzing regressions is a nice, nice hobby and really nice mental exercise uh, especially if it's done uh, in the background besides my day-to-day -day tasks. What is also important that I'm not alone in testing the Linux kernel. And there are other others. Uh, the most known uh, one is uh, Linux kernel CI project. Uh, and it is being used during the Linux Next uh, uh, preparations and uh, on the Linux Next mailing list see records from that uh, project and the other very very well known is so-called Linux test robot is a part of zero day CI kernel test service there are lots of uh, records from that system and what is uh, from my point of view what is really important uh, to know that you will never be faster than any of those robots. Uh, those robots are very, very good at finding uh, compiled time regressions or uh, simple regressions uh, observed on QM. And mm, they act uh, usually a few seconds after the code has been put on the uh, Git services. So they are very, very fast. They are others. Uh, so you, you can search them quite easily in the kernel. If there are any questions, let me know by email. Thank you for your attention.